Geeks love solving problems with a wide range of tech. But what if this problem came from a parent at your child's school whose kid was born with a left arm that ended mid-forearm, and they were wondering if you could 3D print a prosthetic to give their child more abilities. On today's show, I'm joined by Cliff, a pilot and IoT and mobile developer from the UK. He's put together an open source 3D printed bionic hand that could be customized for a range of tasks like picking things up or even playing Xbox. Learn about 3D printing a hand from the mechanics of the movement using fishing line to flexible filament tendons connecting the fingers together. And then learn how you can control it with pressure sensors, consumer IoT hardware, and a mobile app. And the best part is you can do all this at home. Let's get personal computing with Cliff Aegis. Hey, Cliff. Hey, good to see you again. How's yeah. it going? Yeah, good, good. Nice um, to be here. And this, this, this is handy. This is handy. Waving so, hello. Waving hello to the Reverend Reactor here. Cheers. Awesome. This is so cool. I absolutely love this. This is brilliant. But why? why? Well, it's a cool thing, but why? What's why? the story behind, <laughs> behind this hand? Yeah, well, um, family friends, their son, Caden, um, mm -hmm. was born with no forearm. And uh, he, uh, he's been using um, uh, this uh, hook. One of these arm. things? Yeah, that's uh, provided by the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, which is where I live. And um, that's what Caden has. That's what other children have, and, and also adults as well. Um, rather, get given this. It's a bit bit bulky, bit bulky, bit heavy. Steady. Um, and then what? What does that? That goes. If you imagine, uh, Caden has got no arm, so this yeah. goes on his on his prosthetic. What he's got left of his, his thing. Mm -hmm. This goes across his shoulder. It obviously, doesn't fit me. And it hooks on his other shoulder. And as he moves his shoulder backwards and forwards, it pulls literally fishing line, and it opens and closes the hook. That feels fairly. Yeah, have a, have a try. It's a, it's a hefty. So you can imagine he's Popeye on the shoulder. Popeye on uh, one arm, yeah, on one shoulder, the and then <laughs> on the other. Yeah. Um, this is, it's like glass fiber and a, a bit of metal. Yeah, um, that's six to six and a half thousand pounds. So what's that? Ten thousand dollars? Yeah, eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars. Just for that part, for that. which gets replaced every year. He goes to the hospital three day, three trips to the hospital. Being a be, kid, I guess he grows and yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so he goes to the hospital. They put on two prosthetic socks, which is like little socks. They put on these on his uh, his stump. Yeah. And uh, as he grows out of it, because that's what happens, kids grow. He takes the socks off. When he's down to skin, goes back to the hospital. They remeasure, recast a new one, and he keeps the hook to the next hand. Right. Um, I had to borrow that from the hospital. Um, but yeah, uh, that's an old one, so he's got a new one, and he keeps it between each hand. And these hooks don't look very usable. I mean, you can pick things up with it, Yeah. but that's it, whereas a hand here. Yeah. So what inspired you to, to, to look at replacing this with a hand? Well, um, my sons went to the same school as Caden, mm -hmm. um, and uh, his mum uh, caught me one morning in the, the playground and said to me, have you seen the news um, about this dad that 3D printed a, 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 um, a prosthetic hand? And I was like, no, I haven't, uh, Sharon. She explained to me what, what had happened about um, this, this, uh, this um, charity that had been 3D printing hands. And she looked at me and she went, you've got a 3D printer, haven't you, Cliff? I said, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> See where that's going. Yeah, going, yeah. I was yeah. hoodwinked and <laughs> yeah. uh, I, was, I was pulled in and instantly, you know, I love playing with tech. I love hmm. Anything, you know, technology, I was like, yeah, this is a cool project. So I went out to the website, Team Unlimited. Um, it's a cool charity in the UK and across Europe. Um, in fact, actually, I think they're, they're pretty much across the world now. Um, you can download the 3D files and print a, a 3D prosthetic. Um, and what that does is effectively replace the hook at the end. Um, so instead of a metal hook on the end of the prosthetic there, um, it's a hand that closes. Um, so so it's we... a hand literally printed with like a, a, a home 3D printer? Yes, yeah. Don't yeah. even need a big commercial setup, nope. just a nope. cheap home 3D printer. Yep. Down at the files. Yep. Big and, print and print away. Hand. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can use you know real basic uh, like Ender three printers, which are cost like two hundred bucks to get a, a cheap. Um, you're not going to get as good quality as this. This is done with a, a Perusa printer, which is around eight hundred dollars. Um, but you know we're still less than a thousand dollars. And once you've Compared got a printer, to eight thousand for that. Exactly. And yeah. once you've got a printer, you just keep just keep printing. Just keep printing. Yeah. And the material that you see there um, and the rest of the arm costs less than less than ten dollars to to print all the parts you need. Um, wow. to make that hand. So you say um, rest of the arm, I mean, I, I, this, I guess, is the, the mounting part. Yep. So you're saying with one of these, every year they have to rebuild yep. this. But this is printed as well? That's printed as well. That's, that's a dollar's worth of plastic there. It takes about five hours to print. And uh, use the open source Prusa slicer, which goes with the, uh, the Prusa printer that we've been using for this. Um, prints in PLA plastic, so you can see the, the model here. Um, this has all been um, designed to fit Caden. So we took the moulds that he used from the hospital and uh, brought it into the slicer. Um, and then when we slice this, um, 
and come across and we can see the fact that it only takes, what, 551 minutes um, and we can look at how it prints all the uh, elements you can see it printing through um, and how it's going to lay up the print and obviously it will grow out the print bed as, uh, as we print this and the same happens for the fingers and the palm etc. Um, and yeah, if I was to slice this properly I'd even get that down a little bit, uh, little bit more um, for, for actually being a quicker print. So it's just an overnight print, you just click print, yeah. go to bed, yeah. wake up the next morning. And there's a part Caden's of got a new socket. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is an old one. This is one of Caden's old ones. You can see the sensors just inside. Mm. And he uh, he got too big because he's a grown lad. Yep. And uh, when it gets too tight, he literally sends me a message or calls me up and says, can I get a new one? I click. I make it 5% bigger. We've worked out over the last few years that we're 5% big on the on the slicing software, re-slice it, uh, which is what you do with a 3D model, send it to the printer, and five hours later, we have a new one. I drop it off nice. on his doorstep. This is the color that Caden's picked, so it's like black with a with like kind of uh, like flecks of silver in there. Yeah, and that's because he wanted his prosthetic arm to look obviously a prosthetic and not. Okay, you know, we tried with uh, like skin flesh colored uh, filament, and he was like, no, don't want that. I want it to be obvious that it's completely different. Um, so he uses black, and you can see the on the on the handy here. You can see all the red uh, inlay, which yeah. is the the ligaments as such, which holds it all together. So otherwise, it'll, it'll fall apart. It's kind um, of like a red rubber. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's a flexible filament. His is bright green, so it's black with bright green. It looks awesome. Kind of Xbox colours. Yeah, Xbox colours, <laughs> exactly. Um, he loves his Xbox. Um, so yeah, he's he's got that and uh, he uses that. So um, yeah, and he he you know he still uses the hook because um, he was born with no arm and he's he's part of a, a trial um, group in the UK and uh, so he's had a hook uh, an arm since birth, pretty much maybe what one two years old. Uh, he, he was practicing using it, so. He still can do things quicker with the hook than he can with, with handy. He's got, got the muscle memory there. Yeah, he's got the muscle yeah. memory, exactly. Right. Exact. But others that have been used that haven't had a hook that have been using just handy are, are you know, they're, they're loving it. Um, Caden's always wanted to be a chef. Yeah. You can't hold a tomato um, or tomato or, or, or <laughs> yeah, with, a, uh, with a hook. It's just not going to work. You're going to squash you're, you're it gonna, with all that. All that. It's a lot, you can feel that force there. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's going to crack an egg or anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you can with, with handy because it can close up and hold, hold the object, a round object. It's not going to squash it. How, how does it close up? I mean, yeah, you said it earlier, waving, and obviously this was based off a fishing wire, and it looks like there's um, kind of wires in there. So, yeah. how, so how that does is, it work? What's... That is literally uh, inside here, and they pull on, you can see just in here, there's fishing line, braided fishing line. It's a hundred pound braided fishing line. Right. I literally went along to the fishing tackle shop near me uh, and bought a reel of it. I think it yeah. cost like five pound and I got like a thousand meters of it. Wow. Um, and so 3D printed parts, you've got the fishing line here. In the back of the handy here is just four motors. Yeah. And all they do is they move in and out by 20 millimeters. And as they move out, they close the finger. And then as it, it retracts again, the springs in the back, in the back of the finger here, um, they pull the fingers back up upright again. So it's so literally mimics the hand by having a spring at the back to pull it back and yep. then you just you're just pulling there. Yeah. Exactly. You're literally just pulling that yep. like that. Yep. That's and your it. fingers back and forth. That's it. Yeah. And then how are the motors controlled? Because I guess you can't just have the, the, yep. you were kind of waving the scene a bit more control over yep. that. How is it all controlled? Um, we have uh, um, off the shelf, um, this is a, a, a similar board that's inside there. So which is an Ada fruit um, uh, blue fruit boards. Um, so it's just like a commercial there. off the shelf, microcontroller, exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. hobbyist type yeah. board. Exactly, yeah. and then we've got the uh, 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 motor controller board sitting next to it, and it talks between the two on I squared C, which is a, a communications protocol. Mm -hmm. um, and the motors send um, a position feedback from a potentiometer. We measure the position, and with that, we can say stop, start, etc. And then we just send the which motor we want to control. So these two fingers move together because when you think about it, when you do a grip, you don't tend to move those fingers independently. It's kind of hard to do that. It's, it is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, so we don't do it. So um, we move them together. That saves a motor, saves yep. money. And then we have a motor for the two primary fingers and opposing the so thumb one, as two, well. Three, four, yeah. four motors. And then we can control the grips. So and we use Caden has a. Uh, this is where you you uh, we're going to get uh, physical here. So yep. we have a full sensitive resistor. Yeah, uh, which sticks inside the, the socket, mm -hmm. and and then when the muscle squashes against that and squashes it against the hard plastic, it it senses that position. So if you stick your arm up like this, yeah. and you get your pincers, mm -hmm. and you go over the side of your elbow, yeah. if you put your hand back, that muscle goes tight. Mm -hmm. You put your hand forward, that muscle goes tight. Okay. Hold your hand straight up, and make a fist. Both muscles go tight. So open the grip, nice. close the grip, and the grip 
fist grip, if you hold that for more than 600 milliseconds, is what we've got it programmed to, it changes the next grip in the grip sequence. So essentially, he moves his hand the same way yeah, just I move my hand. I exactly, he yeah. moves the same, exactly the same muscles. Yeah, exactly. And just controls. And controls it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the human body That's is amazing. That's incredible. Isn't it? That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And so you just just literally measuring because the muscle swells up and yeah. presses against the. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we and when all we have is these these so are, cool. are, are literally five six pounds. And again, you can get all these parts. You can get from even Amazon uh, and deliver them to your door. Um, but you know you can get them a little bit cheaper elsewhere. But you can get all these parts and build all this. Um, at the moment, the the motors are quite expensive. Um, but we are working on a V2 at the moment, which is even more modified in the back and the mobile phone um, app with, we're moving across to Maui. Product um, placement. So uh, <laughs> we're moving across to Maui as well. Um, and we, at the moment, it's around 500 um, to 600 uh, sort of pounds, sort of dollars. Um, seven, and seven, eight hundred dollars yeah, we, compared we're, to 8,000, so yeah. a tenth the cost. And we're aiming to get that less than 200. Wow, so um, in terms of the software that runs this, I mean, obviously, you're saying you bring the price down. Is this something that's the software's open source, the hardware's yes. open source? Yes. Um, all of this, um, the, the hand originally, the, the original hand design from the wrist onwards um, was a group called Open Bionics, yeah. um, which is a group in the UK that designed this. And it Open Bionics, because it was on GitHub, mm -hmm. uh, and they had it all open source. Um, they went closed source about four years ago. Um, so if you go out to the Open Bionics um, web, uh, GitHub, you'll see that it was all closed source about four years. And that's because it wasn't that they were shunning the open source community is because they're trying to get approval with the likes of the National Health Service, with the likes of the big hospitals here in the USA, right. um, in Germany and France, and they need to get approvals. And to do that, it couldn't be open source. So they went oh, closed source, okay. which is a real shame, but they left the files up there, nice. uh, which is good. So we took those files, heavily modified the internals um, to make it work and be cheaper because their one is considerably more. It's on, on a bit more expensive than the hook. Right. Um, that Caden had before, but it's you know it's a professionally built um, bit of kit, not something that's being made at home in a workshop. But the so, advantage, I guess, of things being made at home in a workshop is if he does something and breaks his fingers, you yeah. can print new fingers. We can, yeah. It's not you're not paying another six thousand dollars for something exactly, new. Yeah. You can print new things. Yeah. And as he grows, we can just print a new socket. And uh, I drop these off, and he, he um, sort of uh, his dad will um, you know connect it up for him, and off he goes again. Yeah, nice. I mean, he breaks the fingers, you know, um, you know. If you think when your hand you hit something, um, you'll stop because it hurts. Yeah, you feel he, it. You've got to get that sensation. He hasn't got feeling. So he often breaks the two little fingers because he bends them back and they snap off. Um, but again, they're pennies to print, you know, and take less so than 30 minutes. So the class just changes fingers if you break Yeah, exactly, them. yeah. And, um, yeah. And it all runs off a, a 5 volt power brick. Um, and, and again, when it, even though the motors are 12 volt, I step up the 5 volts to 12 volts. Mm -hmm. We're only drawing a few hundred milliamps for a few seconds. Um, so it can, it can cope, which means that, again, even the power supply is off the shelf cheap. And the problem he has is the fact that his friends all want to charge their mobile phone. So they, <laughs> he unplugs his battery and charges their phone and then he, his hand doesn't work. So it's, you know, it's kids. Sorry, mate, can I borrow your arm to charge yeah, my exactly, phone? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, and we have a, um, it's a Xamarin mobile app at the moment, which we use for setting the hand up. Yeah. And the idea is, is when um, you have a full professional prosthetic limb, you have it set up in a hospital. You have to go and see a specialist, um, you know, and have it all like configured and set up. I wanted to get away from that and make it such that we can take a 3D printer, like a Prusa 3D printer, um, with some filament, and this was the idea before, you know, in the before times, and drop it in a hospital. I've been um, talking to a hospital in, in uh, Islamabad in Pakistan, mm. um, and drop in the 3D printer, filament, and the components they need and let them make them for the local children. Because um, they don't have the National Health Service that we have in the UK. Yeah. Um, and the you know, uh, amazing hospital you have here in the US. So let's help those that you know, don't have that facility. And another reason why I'm gonna get the price down to less than 200 pounds if we can, so that we can drop off a, a printer, let them print them locally, and then the app will let them set up whether it's the left hand or right hand, what kind of motors, uh, um, settings they need for the force feedback on the, on the motors and the muscle. Um, configuration and how much uh, time and dwell time, etc. It's all configurable in the app. It kind um, of means that somebody who's not a medical expert can set this up. Because I mean, yeah. you're not a prosthetics expert, you're I'm a pilot. Not, no. no, exactly, yeah. You know, so yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> anybody with kind of an idea of how it works could actually yeah. print this yeah. and, and set it up. A parent, you know, if, if you're a parent and you're watching this, you can download all the files and make one. Um, yeah. Wow. So. so in terms of how Caden's using this going forward, what's what's his plans for the future? Is he got? Is he Worked out what hand, how he needs to have his hand working for his future career. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, he has um, using the app. You can 
create um, grip packs, so mm. you can have one for, for school, you have one for home for you know playing with his Xbox controller, um, which is he kind of loves playing. He can, he's got a trigger finger, he holds the Xbox there, and he's got a trigger finger, and he can fire the, the gun in Call of Duty or whatever, quicken his friends. Um, but when he's in the in the um, the restaurant, he can hold the the the, the, the you know the, the tomato. He can hold a potato and, and cut it up. Um, he can't. You know, he could put a glove on maybe and go to the oven and get the hot things up. Obviously, the plastic remotely does that. Um, or he uses the hook where it's metal. So it flips can... back to this to take hot things yeah, out the oven uh, and goes back yeah. to the... Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, um, and it's, you know, because it just slots on, um, he, he can switch between them quite quickly. Quick change, quick change. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, this, is, this is absolutely fantastic. No, this, is, this is really good. And you say you've made all this open source so anybody source. can come along yep. uh, and just recreate this. Yeah, so it's all on my GitHub. So you can reach out there uh, and go out and uh, and and... Look it up and download the files and make your own. Uh, even if it's just for a bit of fun to sit on your desk and play with during the day. Um, sit and wave at you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I guess it's kind of a call to anyone watching is if you think this is something you could do at home, there's probably charities all over, all over the world who would benefit from this. If you've got yeah. a 3D printer, you want to try this out. Maybe this is something you could create, say, just for a hand that waves at you. Yeah. Or actually you could help some kids who just yeah. don't have... Or, or their limbs, maybe yeah. you can come, come yeah. place. This is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you flying all the way out here, especially yep. for this. I'm yep. sure your passengers appreciated the small detour to come and see me. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. And yeah, um, yeah it's yeah. so great to have you in the reactor in Redmond. Awesome. Thanks a lot. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need. <laughs>